of the most beautiful melodies of all time. This is a chorus can't help falling in love. Uh, Elvis Presley, big hit for Elvis from the movie Blue Hawaii, 1961. Um, but what we're going to do, this, this is going to be a, a really, well, I don't have very many lessons like this. And uh, the, what we're going to do is build an arrangement. I'm going to walk you through the process of figuring out what the chords might be first, then putting them together with the melody, and then uh, putting together an arrangement that includes the melody of the chords and some filler notes to fill it out. So we'll talk about a lot of different stuff over the course of this. But the first thing is going to be, if we just start with the melody, oh, we have a, a second part to the melody, right? <laughs> That's it. Two little sections, an eight measure section and about a six, I guess there's only six, five measures in that, uh, in the, the bridge or the B, the B section. And it follows a real typical arrangement of how songs were written back in the 40s and 50s of um, having an A section, the eight measure A section that I played at the top that is re then repeated and then a shorter in this case, B section, we can almost consider it a bridge and then it comes back and does the A section again, and then it just repeats the whole thing. So, and one set of lyrics for the whole thing with maybe just a repeating the last line at the end. Anyway, uh, what we're gonna do though first is, I, all I have written out with this, all you get is the melody written out. Now, I'm kind of betting that you can probably figure it out without the page. So if you can get through, get through all the segments I'm gonna, uh, that are coming up with, without any melody, I mean, without looking at the page, that'd be great. But there's not a lot of info there. It's just what I played a minute ago. So what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be doing this in the key of C. It could be done. Elvis did it in D. And so like our lesson that Nesh put together on this has the chords in the key of C, but then capoing it to the second if you need to do it in Elvis's original key. No particular reason that that's important uh, for what we're doing as far as an instrumental arrangement. But what we're going to be doing here is taking every note, every melody note that we need a chord for and deciding what chords in the key include that note and then picking a chord to harmonize it with. So for example, the melody starts on C. That's the first note we hear. And we'll be talking about the seven triads in the key of C, which happen to be, of course, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and we could finish it up with another higher C major. Now what I just did there, this set of the, the notes I just played are on the page, the attachment that comes with this. And it will just show you the voicings I chose to use for each of those chords. The C, what I'm doing is playing each of those in, in one hand position, close position as they would call it on the piano, where I'm just playing the root, the third, and the fifth in that order. So I played my C chord with the C on the fifth string, the E on the fourth string, and the G open. And there's my one, three, and five, the three notes that make up our C chord. Um, and that's what I just did running through all the chords there, playing them in triad shape. Uh, now, our choices are going to be, we, we pick what melody notes we need to come up with a chord for, and in this case, the first melody note is a C, and it's held for half a measure. We'll talk later on about the different types of rhythms we could do it. We might play it with... Anyway, we'll get to, get to that later, maybe. Um, but we're looking for the three chords in the key of C, or at least the first three chords, the three triads that include the note C. And that's what we're going to be talking about here, is how a, a, a methodical way to come up with that rather than just playing all the chords in the key of C and seeing which one of them, which one of them include the note C. So that is where we're going in the next segment. We'll start talking about that. And by the time we've gotten through all this, you will be able to play, hopefully, you'll be able to play your own version of Can't Help Falling in Love. Well, let's first talk about the seven triads in the key of C. Hopefully this is info, this is not brand new info, but if it is, we'll take it from the beginning. 
Um, every scale includes, seven, every major scale, we're talking about the key of C major, of course includes seven notes, and they follow a pattern of whole steps between all of the notes except notes three and four, and seven and eight. And uh, that means that triad number one in the key consists of notes one, three, and five of the scale, which are C, E, and G. So those are the three notes that make up triad one, and that's, of course, a C major chord. Triad two is going to be a, the same stack of notes, one, three, and five, but starting on note two, which is D. And that means it's going to be D, F, A, which actually are notes two, four, and six of the key. This is where it could get a little, little uh, sketchy, because a lot of times what we're going to be doing here is talking about the notes of a particular chord not as one, three, five, but as what numbers they are in the scale. So chord number one, at this point when I use the term chord, I mean triad. We're only talking about three note chords temporarily. Um, triad number one consists of notes one, three, and five. But triad number two consists of notes two, four, and six. Well, you might want to start writing something out here as I start talking about this, because now we're going to talk about the notes, the specific notes that are in each of the seven chords. And again, we're dealing with the key of C just because. Um, at a minute ago, I was talking about them um, uh, algebraically, just the numbers. Chord one is one, three, five. Chord two is two, four, six. But now if we, if you take a look at the, 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 the melody page that I wrote out, at the bottom I've got these the seven triads, the three majors, three minors, and three, and the one diminished triad. And, but if you wrote out the names of the notes instead, triad one, and you might put the, the root at the bottom and the third and the fifth above it. So you might write C, E, G. There is triad one. Then, to the right of that, D, across the bottom, write out the whole scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Got it? Okay. Then put the third of each of those above it. So above C, we're going to put an E, and then above that a G. And if you just extend that out all the way across, in the middle line, you'll have the same set of letters, but starting on E. It's going to go E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And we don't need an E again, because we only need seven. And the third line, the third of the, if we stack them that way, we've got C, E, G here. We'd start having D, F, A here. And that third line, which is going to be the fifths of each of these chords, will be G, A, B, C, D, E, F. By the time you get to the end, you should have the three notes in our B diminished chord, B, D, F. Okay. So, hopefully you have your own visual aid there now. Now what we want to do is figure out, for any given note, what are the chords that include that note. Okay, if your head's not spinning from the last uh, segment and we're ready to like dig into this song, and hopefully you can start applying this to other songs. I'll, I'll get more to that later. Um, one thing we kind of have to decide is how often do we want to change chords? Do we, and that's sort of going to be dictated by the, how the melody goes and the rhythm of the melody. And so if we play through this melody first, I, I feel beats going very slowly and something like this. have half notes. Do, do, do. Longer note in the second measure. And then a pickup, da, da, into the third measure and back to half notes. Da, da, da. Longer note in the second measure of the two there, kind of mimicking the first thing. Do, and then similar 
half notes. Do, 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 do. Have a little bit more in that pair of measures in the second measure. But then we have back to half notes. Bum, bum, bum. So the most we're going to have is two chords in a measure. But we might have some measures where we just stay on one chord for the whole measure, depending on what seems to be going on. So we got a C. What do you think? Our choice for a C is, you can figure all this out pretty quickly, right? We got a C chord that has C in it. We have A minor, chord six, and F chord four. Well, playing a C chord and playing that C in the melody, sounds like we might have to start there. But let's see. Doesn't sound like the beginning of the song. Starting on F. I think there's F chords coming up, but not here. We gotta start on C. Okay, but that's the choices we want to consider every time we have C in the melody. C, A minor, and F. Okay, the next melody note is G. Well, what are we our chords that have, which is note five? The chords that have G in it are, of course, a G chord, would have it as the root. Uh, the chord that would have it as the third is E minor. And the chord that would have it as the fifth is C. What do you think? Do we stay on C? Don't think so. But it works. All right, maybe we change to G there. That works. Our other choice was E minor. Now this is where we kind of ha we might have to go listen to the original and see what we think happens. Did it sound like it went to the dominant chord five, or did it sound like it did something a little darker? I'll let, you, I'll let you decide on that. We'll come back to it. Now, sometimes we might not decide on a chord until we figure out what's, what maybe is going to follow it. Now, the next melody note in the second measure is C again. So what we have in the melody is C, G, C. We already talked about the possible chords for C. Our three choices are C, A minor, and F. And we might have to try all three of those with both of our the choices that we had for the G. So let's say we're going to the G chord there and then to G, and back to C. Absolutely sounds fine. But let's say we want to go to a different chord for the C. I'm going to still go to G and now go to F. Hmm. Or to A minor. Now we just tried all three possibilities for the C in the second measure using G as the second chord in the first measure. But we also know that that chord in the second measure in the first measure could have been E minor. So now let's try E minor with each of those. C to the E minor with the G on the top and then maybe back to C. By the way, in case you, it's not obvious, um, when I'm grabbing these chords, I'm playing the bass note for the chord and the melody note as the highest note that we're hearing, and then all the notes in between that I can grab so that we're hearing a lot of the chord instead of just the bass note. Something like that. That doesn't give you a real feel for it in there. So you're hearing the, the heavier harmony or thicker harmony of me grabbing all the notes in between the bass note on the bottom and the melody note on the top. So, uh, back to, where were we? E minor, and back to C maybe. That's what we just tried. Let's see about C to E minor, to A minor. Our other choice there is F. What do you think? Which of these do you like the best? And if you're, if you're kind of up in the air on some of them, 
listen to the original and realize again that they're a whole step higher. So put a capo at the second fret if you want to be in Elvis's key. But I'm hearing this. C to E minor to A minor feels like the right thing. 